Okay, so welcome to the webinar on GeoGebra and Equatio. My name is Linda Daly and I am an AT specialist with the Special Education Technology Center. And I have been doing the math webinars, most of them for SETSI, and a lot of times I will do one that is a list of a bunch of different math supports. But this time I wanted to focus on GeoGebra and Equatio and get into it a little bit more. I also would like to find out what people know and what they want to learn about. So I have it prepared, but I also am willing to go off of what I've prepared based on what the participants know or want to know. So we're hoping, I'm hoping you're going to become familiar with apps like GeoGebra and using its geometric constructions, their various calculators and some of its algebraic features. Um, learn how to use Equatio Mobile on a tablet phone to input math and convert worksheets into a document. It's a really cool feature actually. And then just learn how to use Equatio for digital math and see how its speech to text and equation prediction work. We're going to be doing this through the, the lens of UDL. So we're thinking about this as ways to give students multiple means of engagement with the curriculum, representation, so that you'll see there's multiple ways you can represent it, and also multiple ways they can show you what they know. So that's the lens through which we're thinking about using these programs. I want to start first with a poll, so I'm going to stop sharing for a minute because I really would like to know what the participants know and then I'll decide where I go from there. So the first poll is how well do you know GeoGebra? And so I'm launching it and if you want to just um, answer the question, just that way I'll know what kind of knowledge base you're working with to start with. Okay. Okay, great. So, thank you. So, it looks like that it's a fairly new program to most people. And um, somebody has actually used ModMath on an iPad. And I, um, if you have any questions with that after the webinar, I'm happy to talk to you about that too. But um, it looks like most people don't know about GeoGebra. So then the next question would be, how well do you know Equatio? And it looks like people are new to that too. So that's great. That tells me where I'll start. I'll, I'll give you some um, basic information about it and I will, we'll just start from there. So, um, and then I'll show you some of the cool things. I'm gonna go back and share my screen again so that we can look at it, so. So with GeoGebra, this is actually, it's a program, it's an app, it's a website. You can use it on any of those. And um, the, I have actually a question about Equatio and I will get to that when we get to Equatio. So thank you for asking that. And if I don't remember, please put a chat and say, please answer. So I just, I thought I would just start with GeoGebra first and so, um, this is actually cross-platform completely. So, and it works the same on all the different platforms. You can do graphing, you can do geometric construction, you can do algebra, you can analyze data. They have a fabulous resource bank of lessons. You can do algebra calculation. They have a scientific calculator. They now have 3D math that you can explore you can take notes and you can also join groups with your students. You can actually have a group or if you have a group of teachers that want to use it. On the um, PowerPoint that I'll send you, there's a link to a video demo that I've just made where I've taken an eighth grade lesson and then done it with GeoGebra. So that will be on the, you can, get, there's a link to that right on the PowerPoint, but Right now, I'm gonna go ahead and show it to you and we'll just explore it a little bit. 
So when you pull it up on the website, this is what you're going to get is this is just geogebra.org. And so you have the home page, you have a news feed if you want it. There's resources, like I told you, and we're actually going to look at those two. Then your profile, there's people. If you want to follow people, there's a couple of people that I, um, they're, their resources I was always using so I could follow them. And then there's also groups. So if you want to join the group that I created for webinars, um, you can just go to geogebra.org and select groups. And then you can just put that group code right in here. And so the group code is, I had it on the slide, but now the slide's not up. So um, the group code is, V as in Victor, Y, V as in Victor again, seven, N as in Nancy. V, Y, V, seven, N. Okay, so now that will be on the closed captioning. I'm being quiet for a minute so that it wouldn't go away. <laughs> so um, I can actually put that in the chat also. So let me just do that real quickly. Um, so, whoops, I don't know why it didn't type. So you go to geogebra.org slash groups, and then that's the group code for that. So, so there you go. If you want to go there, feel free to go there. And then when I get to the group, you'll see where that goes. So the first thing I thought I would show you is just the basics of GeoGebra. This, um, like I said, it works on iPad, it works on um, Android tablets, it works on phones, it works on, you can download it for Word, you can use it in the Chrome browser. It actually works across all those platforms. You can log in or you don't have to log in. For this, I went ahead and logged in. I just used my Google login. And um, so you can, then you can be logged in and you can save your, um, your graphs. So first I'm just gonna show you the basic graphing calculator. So when you, and I, I will tell you that I first discovered this years ago when I had a student who was paralyzed from the neck down and accessed curriculum through a laptop with a, a camera on the laptop and then a dot on her chin that the camera would, you know, read and then she could use an on-screen keyboard. So she was in middle school honors math and needed a way to do geometric construction. So. I, um, the screen is normally full size. I just make it a little smaller right now so that you can see the closed captioning behind what I'm doing. So normally the screen is full size, the graph will be full size. The first thing I'm gonna do is to show you how you can do an equation of a line. And if you remember from back in high school, the equation of a line is y equals mx plus b. So, um, and GeoGebra automatically gives you a slider bar for those variables. So then what you can do is you can move these variables around and you can show your student how they affect. So M is the slope of the line. So you can see how the slope changes when we move the variable for X. And B is the Y intercept where it crosses the y-axis. So you can again move it and see how that changes. So I think you can see how just from an engagement perspective and a representation perspective, that can make this a lot more engaging for your students and they can see it really easily how those two variables actually affect what a line does. And so that's one basic thing they do. The next thing I want to do is to show you how you can create a geometric construction. So I'm just going to go to my tools 
and I'm going to go to um, a point so that I make a point. And so I'm going to click on my tool for a point. Down here it says select position or line, function or curve. So I'm just going to put a point right here and then I'm still using that point tool. So I'm just going to put a point right here and then I'll put another point right here. And now what I want to do is connect those as a triangle, which is a polygon. So we come down here and we can construct a polygon. And so because I don't have anything up here, we may have to, I had to go to more. And so then we have polygon down here and I click that. And now it tells me select all vertices, then first vertex again. So let's start with A, go to B, go to C, go back to A. And now I have my um, triangle. I can actually measure my angles. I can draw perpendicular lines. I can draw circles around points. So you can do any geometric structure with a mouse. So if your student needs eye gaze, they can use that as a mouse. If they just need to be able to see it in a different manner and be able to manipulate it a little easier, they can use their mouse to do that because then they could rotate it around a point, they could move it around the screen. I, um, you need to go up to the move, go back to the move, and then you could actually move it around the screen, you can rotate it, and play with it, which you can't do on a piece of paper. So it's a great way to explore geometry with being able to, you know, kind of see the features that you couldn't see if you did it on a piece of paper. So that's the basic graphing calculator. The other thing I want to show you is when you are graphing it, the algebra shows up. So you saw how the algebra showed when I did the equation of the line. Now you can see that when I did point A, it tells me where it is, where point B was, where point C was, and then it tells you as you move it around what you've done, that you've translated it, you've, um, where you, what your section segments are. So it actually shows you the algebra behind what you're graphing. So, so that's the basics of that. Does anybody have any questions about that? before I move on. Okay, the next thing I wanna show you that's kind of fun is they have a calculator that shows how to do, it's, it's called a, an algebra calculator. So I'm gonna pull that up and so I'm gonna to go to apps and I'm gonna pull up my, and it's not showing up here, so I'm gonna go back to the um, I'm going to actually go back to the just plain old geogebra.org. So, because I want to show it to you from where I got it. And it says that my changes are not going to be saved because I don't want to save this. I could have because I'm logged in. But I want to go to this um, CAS calculator. So, my computer algebra calculator. And then I want to show you what it can do. So we're actually going to show, look at the calculator portion over here. So if we want to do A plus A, it will tell you that's 2A. So it's the algebra part of it, not the numbers. I mean, we have a calculator that does 2 plus 2, but this will do A plus A. It will also do X squared. And I'm going to do X squared plus 2XY plus Y squared. Oops, and I, that should be a 2 <laughs> typo there. Okay, and then I'm going to hit enter. And you can see that it actually took it out to show you what it is. So it really just put it in a different order. But we can do factor that. So I'm going to say factor that. And you see it gives you a, um, an option to choose from. So you can say factor. And then within here, you can then say x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. And if you remember from your old 
Um, algebra two days, it should tell us x plus y squared. So let's see if it does. And it's x plus y squared. So, um, so it actually will show, you can actually do your calculations there. So that is another way that you can use it. And so that's the, the algebra calculator for it. There's some other really fun features that it has. And when I say fun, they're great to learn with and they are fun too. So I'm just gonna show you that I'm gonna close a couple of these because I end up getting a lot of open tabs. <laughs> so I want to show you the, the easiest way I can do, I pulled it up here, so let me see if it, there we go. Okay, so under the 3D calculator, we we can have some resources, and I had them pulled up, and I'm not sure, I it may not have it up anymore, so let's, we may have to re-pull it up. So let me go to this one that's not pulling up, and we're gonna close it. Um, I have groups in there twice, so I may, let me see. Okay, so we're just gonna come over here. This is a good time as any to show you the resources because it's the easiest way to show you the 3D calculator. And so we're gonna come down here, we're gonna put in 3D um, and we'll see what we can get here. 3D geometry and cross sections. So we're going to just, this is one of the resources that a person's already put up. And so you can see um, the author is Anthony from Oregon, and the topic is cuboid, prism, solids, and 3D shapes. And you can see how it actually draws this. Now you can do this. You can go to the 3D calculator and create these yourselves. But you can take one of these and you can see how you can explore the different properties. You can look at it, you know, how it rotates this way. And if you think about how we had to learn 3D on a piece of paper in 2D, this is quite amazing that now we can do this. And so you can change how transparent the objects are. And then you can also move it around. So, um, so that would be something that I would just encourage you to explore. And the way I did that was, again, I just went out here to, um, I'll just go back to the home for it. And I went to resources. So under the resources, I just searched for 3D. You can come down here and you'll see all kinds of resources. So they just have all kinds of resources. One of my very favorite ones that I've used for years, and I had it pulled up here, so we'll see if I can still find it. <laughs> it um, is the proof of the Pythagorean theorem without words. So here it is. This is one of their resources. Um, Steve Phelps would be somebody that I would probably follow because I do like his examples. So when we think about the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Well, here we have a triangle, a right triangle. So we have a squared is this yellow square. B is this multicolored square because here's b, so here's b squared. And then if you come down here, you see the hypotenuse would be C. So we're saying A squared plus B squared equals C squared. But how do we show that to students? If they connect these colors and put them here, you will see that all of the area in those two squares fits perfectly in this third square. So again, it's the Pythagorean theorem proofed without words. So those are the kind of activities you can show your students. They can also create those themselves. And so you can go to groups and create those for your students. You can um, use that. So I'm going to go to my groups. You can give them assignments. You can create activities. You can show them activities. So here is my webinar test group. And I perhaps some of you have joined right now. So I had just given this little explore the equation of a line. So I had just given you an equation of a line and said you could play with it. So um, you can write a comment back to me. Somebody wrote pretty cool. Um, again, you can create a task for your students. You can create an announcement. You can show them the resources you want them to use. You can give them feedback. 
you can check the feedback they've given you. So, um, and, and again, it's, they don't have to give any personally identifying information. You give that class code, they can put it in there, they can choose what shows up. So, um, so that is GeoGebra. And I did want to mention that on their scientific calculator, so that's the group, how you get to it, on their scientific calculator down here, there's actually a test mode. So your students could use it for a test, but they wouldn't give them the answers. They, they would just use it as a calculator. It wouldn't give them all the other resources. There is a test mode. You can do, um, so there's the graphing calculator, there's the 3D calculator, there's the algebra calculator, the scientific calculator. Um, you can have notes. You can do just the geometry like I showed you. GeoGebra Classic is you just go to the website and you'll get what they used to have before they had all the apps. But you can see that they it works offline, which is great. And so you can go to the Google Play Store, the Microsoft Store, um, you have the App Store for iTunes. So it works for all of those different areas. And it's I think it's a great app. People have used it in the past years ago. It's been around for years. So if you know somebody who says, oh, I used it years ago, I would encourage you to tell them, look, check it out again, because they've really done a lot of improvements to it. And one of the things I really like is it works basically the same no matter what device you're on. And so if your students have created an account or you have created an account and saved it, all that work and all those graphs, all the information is going to be there on whatever device you're on. And it doesn't have to be online if you've downloaded it and actually installed it on a program, you know, on a Windows device or, a, you know, whatever device you have that can work offline. And then you still have your work there. So um, that is GeoGebra. Is there anything you would like me to show you? Um, you can go ahead and put it in the chat. Uh, I, I do want to just show you, I have a comparison chart and it shows you what the different features are of all the different um, apps they have. So you can do numeric calculations on all of them. You can do function operations on all of them and fraction operations on all of them. You can graph on everything except the scientific calculator. You can do sliders on everything except the scientific calculator. Um, vetrix and matrices. Um, and you see there's some asterisks. Some of them are coming soon. So, um, so that will just give you that overview of what you can do on everything. So you can see that the classic has all of it. That, that was always available, but then they, and so that's where you can get everything. But then if you do it with apps, not everything is available on the individual apps. So If you are on the iPad, you should still be able to go to the main page, I believe, and find groups. Is that not showing up? I'm going to pull it up on my iPad real quick and see what I find. So I, um, we actually have time because I want to do half of it for GeoGebra and half of it for Equasio. So um, I didn't have it automatically pulled up on this, but I will. So we should um, be able to. If nothing else, you should be able to go into Safari and go to geogebra.org. I'm not sure on this iPad, I have it. Um, and then you should be able to sign in. So you'll have to sign in. Um, and so if you're at geogebra.org, are you at geogebra.org or are you on the app? Okay, so if you're geogebra.org and you sign in, have you, you maybe haven't had a chance to create an account. You should be able to find it. So I'm doing it right now so that I can do it with you. Because So I'm just going in there and I'm signing into my account on my iPad. Um, okay, so I'm signed in and, oh, you know what? You are very right. It may be that groups are not available on the app, the iPad app, which surprises me, but I'm not seeing it here. So just a second. 
Nope, here you go. In the upper left on your iPad, if you're in Safari and you go to GeoGebra.org, what you're going to need to do is, I'm, I'm hoping you can see my um, mouse circling around where it says GeoGebra to the left of it. There's three lines. If you click on those, you should get this menu here and group should be at the bottom. So that is working exactly the same on my iPad. I'm going to put this up to my screen and you might even be able to see it. So you can see my iPad looks just like what's on my computer. And then I have groups at the bottom. So I went to the three lines right next to GeoGebra and groups is at the bottom. So you will have to make an account to make that work because you have to have an account to create groups to be a part of. So once you have an account, that should show up. So, but thank you, that was a great question. And that was, that was good. So that I could show you how it worked on the iPad. So, okay, any other questions on GeoGebra? And if not, I have a question for you. If you have an idea of how you might use this with a student or a teacher you might share this with. And you can just put it in the chat. And the chat doesn't show up in the recording, so you don't have to be afraid to say anything. So, like I said, I use it with a student who had to use an alternative mouse to access the computer. But could you see how you could use it with a student even just to explain some of the um, concepts easier? So, um, Oh, I'm trying to find the best way to use this for a student's math workbook. Um, and, and so what level of math is the student using? Would it be arithmetic or geometry? Sixth grade. So I think you could do a lot of those things with it. And because you can save it, um, you could actually, they could save their work and they can actually send it to their teachers. So that's part of the process of the people in the groups and through Google Classroom. So they could, they could create a group with their teacher and they could share their information. If you go to my home, you'll see these, let's see, you should be able to see some of the ones I've made already. And I'm trying to find where that is. Um, because typically they show up right where I am. And so here we go. You'll see the ones I've created. So I've done these and I've made them private. So that means that I only share them with who I share them with, or I can share them with a link. So do you see how this could be my workbook and I would have this work right here. So these are the ones that I've done. So does that help? Okay, um, right, it does more than mod math does. It's um, mod math is definitely an alternative paper and I really like mod math, but it is somewhat limited. So it depends on what your student needs. It's in some ways mod math is easier and it's really easy for the students to use, but then this will do more and your student will be able to actually do more in their calculations that the graphing is definitely a nice feature here because in sixth grade they're pretty much doing graphing by then. So yeah, so that's great. Any other questions? Okay, then I will go ahead and move on to um, Equatio. Before I do that, I just want to very quickly go back to my slideshow just to show you that um, there is a video demo and that is from a, it's from maybe an eighth grade math lesson, but for the sixth grade math lesson, I think you'd be able to see how you could do it, take a lesson and then do it with GeoGebra. So I would encourage you to check that one out. And then also, I just wanted to show you, there's an example. So here's the Pythagorean theorem without words. And then this was a fun one for science, an inclined plane with two masses and a pulley. So when you get the slide, you'll be able to click on that and go right to this activity that it, somebody had already created. And then um, you'll see the author. So you can always search for that author and see more examples of lessons they've done if you like that. 
So the next one is Equatio. Equatio is from Text Help. They are the people who make Read and Write for Google, or actually Read and Write. It's for Google, they make it for Word, but Read and Write. And they now, they make a math program. It actually started that there was a math app that worked with Google Chrome and then text help actually hired the math teacher who created that. And now he has made this fabulous program that works with um, Word or it works with Google Docs. So you can use it on either platform. And it has handwriting recognition, it has speech to text, there's equation prediction, both for math and for science. There is, um, it works with Microsoft Word, Google Docs, Sheets, Slides, Forms, and Drawings. The critical thing about that working with forms and drawings is it means you can create a worksheet, send it to your students via Google Classroom or just via Google Drive, and they can actually do their math on that worksheet. And I'll show you how you can even, if you just have a worksheet that you haven't put into the electronic form, you can actually take a picture of it. It will put it in using the Equatio mobile. mobile. It will bring it into the Google Doc and then they can do their math right there with it. So um, it has some really cool features. So we'll just look at those and we will show, uh, again, I'll just show you how it works. I do have, I have some videos of how it works and Text Help has some fabulous videos. So they have short little clips and I'm going to show you some of those. But I do have a whole overview video that you could click on here and get to where I've just shown you each feature. So on this one, I'm going to explain some of them and show some of them, but I want to get to some of the more fun things. So if you want to look at each one of the features being used for how you can input, you can go to this overview. But I'm going to go ahead and go back to my um, website and I'm going to close all of the um, GeoGebra ones so that I can just have a few things that aren't up. So here's just a Google Doc. It's just a Google Doc that I've put math in. So the first thing I'm going to do is just show you how you can input things. So there, um, when you pull up Equatio, and this doesn't matter if you have a Word Doc or a Google Doc, you can pull up Equatio. It will look very much the same down below. And if you're doing it in Word, you'll pull up your Word document and then you'll just open up Equatio like you do with any other app. You'll go, you can go down to your start menu and type Equatio and it'll pull it up. If you're in Google Docs, you'll find the Equatio icon right here is, well, wherever it is, you might have it over here, but this is what it looks like. It's this little blue um, same thing down here. It'll just be this little icon. So you'll pull it up. It, the first time you do it, it will tell you that you need to accept the permissions because it obviously needs to alter your data and have access to your Google Docs um, but or your forms or slides, whatever you're using it on. So to show it to you, I'm just going to go ahead and just show you, we'll just solve x squared plus 4 equals 13 because that's kind of the easiest way to do it. So we have an equation editor, and if you've done any digital math, you've heard the term equation editor before. Um, Microsoft Word has an equation editor built into it, but this is their equation editor. What's different about this is there's an equation predictor. So when you typically have to type x squared, you would do x and then the little up caret, that's the shift six, and then you would do the two for squared. But on this one, you could do X and then you could just type SQ and it gives you a prediction. What do you want? Do you want squared, square root, square, square root this way or square meter? So I would just say squared. So it's X squared. And then I can say X squared plus four equals 13. So then I can just go ahead and hit enter. And this is one of the great things is with digital math, we've been trying to figure out for years how to do math vertically, like what students would do on paper, because traditionally we have always had to do it in a line because that's, you know, the computer goes in a line. So this was a fabulous um, 
feature when now we can do it that we can do it up and down, you know, we can do it vertically. So what they've done is they now allow you how to align it in the way you want to align it so that you can try to get those um, equal signs lined up too. But I'm just going to go ahead and just keep doing it as you're seeing. So I am going to say um, x squared equals 13 minus 4. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say x, whoops, x squared equals 9. Okay, now what you want to say when you're solving an equation is the square root of x squared equals the square root of 9. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do control shift enter and you see how it actually replicated my line. So take away that option that students have where, oh, when they bring it down, they might not bring it down exactly right. And then we can just highlight this and we can do our, whoops, <laughs> well, that didn't work like I wanted it to. So I'm going to say SQ, I'm going to say square root of X squared. And so there's my square root. And then I think I should be able to turn that into a square root. Um, but I'm going to go here and say nine. Um, one thing, whenever you're doing digital math, you'll notice my cursor is under the square root. So anything I do here is going to do it under the square root. So I have to use my right arrow key to get out from under the square root. And then I could hit enter. And now I can say X equals, um, and it equals nine, but really, or it equals three, but really it equals plus or minus three, right? So we can go PL and it gives you plus or minus three. So, um, and then you've got your whole equation has been solved here. So if I pull this up, you'll see it. And once you're sure that you like it, you can say insert math. Now, before I do that, I wanna go up to my document and I want to make sure my cursor's where I want to insert my math because it's going to insert it wherever your cursor is. So um, I'm going to, and now I'm going to actually close this equation window and you can see that that whole problem is in there. So your students could digitally have done all of that math. So, um, and this is actually something that you can then, you know, make smaller or bigger so that it makes sense and you can change if it's inline or wrapped how it is and where that's important is when you're actually typing a test or a worksheet you can be typing and do it in line at the same time so um, that's where that's probably going to be helpful is when you're creating something so that's the basic equation editor i do want to just show you a couple other things about how you can use that so um, this is one of the things that I actually didn't like in the beginning, and now I realize why I really like it. Once your math is in here, you actually have to clear it to start over again. But say your students go out to their document again, and then they didn't insert it, they forgot to do that, or they forgot to do something with it. It's actually really nice that all that math was still there. So after I closed it, all that math stayed and your students choose when they want to clear it out. So that's a really nice feature. And so um, when you're looking at this, you do need to click to get that blue line around it. And that tells you you're in entry mode. You can create a fraction. It's giving you that little idea, but that's not what I want to show you. I just want to show you how you can actually enter things. So there's a graphing editor. It's the Desmos graphing editor. So you can do that. Um, you can do handwriting recognition. And so you could actually just click on that and you can start writing here. And um, so you can just do, and I'm not sure why it's not doing it. There you go. So four plus four and it should, there you go. And so then it shows it over there. And if you like it, you can edit it. Um, the, I'm going to go ahead and clear it out because I don't need to enter it. I just wanted you to see that you could do that. It would enter it in your document. One of the features that I really like is they have speech input. The speech input 
only takes the words that have to do with math. So I will go ahead and I will type x squared plus 4 equals 13 here. And so you'll see that. So you choose speech and then you start the speech input and then you start talking and you'll see the words that you're saying on the left, but only math shows up on the right, which is what will be entered into the document. What you're seeing right now is every time I say the word and, and could be a math term. Um, a and B are common math terms. And so that's what you're seeing. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to edit those. And so I'm going to clear them out. 2x squared. Whoops, I do need to start my speech input again. x squared plus 4 equals 13. So you can see how your students can actually use their words to do their math. So I think that's a fabulous um, option for your students. So, and then they can insert their math. And I have a feeling you're gonna see exactly what I was talking about, that it gets inserted where your cursor was. But actually my cursor was okay. I had already taken it down in the document. So I wanted to show you that. I also wanna show you that you can use the equation editor for more than just math. So I can start with the, if I wanna say I wanna do the Pythagorean theorem, I start and I say PY, and I get the option for Pythagorean theorem. Now, that's the only option I get, and the reason is, I'm gonna close that, I'm gonna to go to my options here, whoops, my options, and I am going to turn on my math options and I have chemistry off, but I'm going to turn chemistry on and I'm going to save that. Now, when I come back here and I type PY, I get not just Pythagorean theorem, but I get pyrosulfuric pyro acid, which would be a chemistry formula. So I get that option um, and I can choose either one. If your students are younger and you're just using it for math, I would suggest you keep that chemistry formula off because that will just confuse your students. But I wanted to show you that that's an option because math and science are so interrelated that this is a really nice option that we have for math and science. I also want to show you that we can do things like the binomial form formula. So, so here we have binomial distribution. Um, I meant quadratic formula actually, so I'm going to type QU. <laughs> so um, quadratic formula. So when we're solving in a system of equations with two variables, um, that can be very helpful for us. So um, now if that's one you're working on right now, you can actually make that a favorite that your students can come up with and they can name it. And so that will come up quickly for them. So um, the other thing I want to show you is say you are typing a test and a form and so you need to do text and math at the same time. You can type text in here and you could say solve the following and then you could go down a line, you could remove the text and don't have it as text anymore and then you can just type x plus four and let's say we want to do it with our words um, equals eight and then we could insert that math and there we are so we could do that and you can actually type your action and you could do that on a form so you could type that as a form so um, that would be for you to create your um, math for them or if your students needed to give explanations as they were working they could do that right there in that input window they wouldn't have to come back to their document explain it and then insert their math they could do it all at the same time so do you have any questions about this basic how you could add you could do math 
on a Word doc or a Google doc. And those, so basically I was showing you the entry methods for how you could do that. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is if you select this, it's their math space and it's like a, an actual just math um, worksheet. You can do the equation editor right here and add it into this if you want. But what I really want to show you is you can do shapes and you can do some extra things. So when you're teaching lessons, you can really use this as an option to really show your students some activities. You can share these activities with them and let them use it. So one of the things they have is coins. You can bring up um, coins. So you select that and then you just use, you, you hold your mouse down and you know drag it and it'll make it as big as you want. One of the things that's um, available over here is you can actually use speech. And so you can actually say what this is. One cent. So. Large dollar. So, and you can change what is spoken when your student selects that. They can copy it. They can, um, you could make activities where they can, you know, put them together say what you know three nickels equals and so you could do that and it could be an interactive activity that you use for your students again all the same entry methods are available down here that you had with the um with the one on the google doc so those are all there one of the things that is really nice here is you can share this math space with your students and then you can actually um, they can do the work and then you can give them real time feedback. So I have an example of an hour long webinar that if you're interested in this, I would really encourage you to watch because it talks about how teachers are really using this in their classrooms. And one of the things they do is they do their entry tasks with this. So all the students can pull it up. They can ask questions right here on this. The teacher can get it and they can be answering questions. They can actually have kind of an interactive discussion with all their students. Um, without having to go all around the room all the time. And um, obviously you want to go around the room some of the time, but sometimes the students want to be working and you might, they can just quick shoot you um, a question through math space that then you can look at, or you can actually be looking at all of their entry tasks and then just give them feedback individually with it. So, um, so that's one of the things, and that explains how you do that. One of the things you can do with this is you can actually, so here's the assignment and this will give you a better explanation. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play this for you. It is two minutes, but I think we have the time. So let me just play that for you. In the Equatio Math Space, teachers can create assignments for their students and provide feedback on their responses. As a teacher, you can easily create a math problem or activity using text and math input, shapes and manipulatives, and more. To send to your students, click the share icon in the top right corner of the Equatio Math Space. If you want to share this as an open-ended activity that students don't need to turn in, choose the first option. But to keep track of your students' responses and provide them with feedback, choose the second option. Then just share the math space link with them through classroom, social media, or by pasting somewhere for them to access. When your students open the assignment, they can complete their work, and then send right back to you. You'll get a notification and you can also see their work in the assignment section of your dashboard. You can then assess and leave feedback. And send right back to your student. 
your student will get a notification that their teacher has left them some feedback and they can open up the Equatio Math Space to review it. They can even toggle off the feedback to keep working and resubmit. You'll see their updated response in your dashboard and the feedback loop can continue. To learn more about Equatio, subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit the link below. So I, um, I do just want to say real quickly that I want to thank TechSelp that they have given us permission that we can actually use their videos during our webinars and still be able to record them. So um, that's really nice that they've allowed us to do that. So I thought that was better than I tried to explain it to you, but they do it. And so you could see how that worked, what I was talking about sharing with your students. So does anybody have any questions yet? Um, if not, I'm going to sh oh, yep, there is a question. So let me look at that. Um, yes, you can. They ask, can you scan a worksheet into this system and do the work on that page? Yes, you can. And that's what I'm going to show you next. So with Equatio Mobile, you can open up a document or a math space and you can actually on a phone or a mobile device, scan a worksheet and bring it in. And so I was playing with that earlier. And then you can actually, you can use it, but it, what you, you do is you end up bringing it in as a PDF. So then you do need to probably do the work below it, but I'll show you how it works. So, um, and I have one other question there. So let me just see if, um, Okay, so um, let me show you how this works. Okay, so I'm gonna play this one for you. And this is Equatio Mobile. And this one, they actually, there's, I'm gonna start over again, because I think it was kind of small. There's no words. This one actually just shows you what they're doing. So they're using handwriting on a mobile device and then they're telling it to save it, and it's gonna show up in the document that's open. So you can type it in, you can handwrite it in, or you can do it as a picture. Now they just show it as a post-it note, but you can actually take a picture of an entire um, worksheet. So, um, and then, it works just like that. So let me just close that. So, and then what happens is it actually just um, brings it in. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna show you. So I took, I used Equatio Mobile and what you do is you actually go to a specific, you, you, you go in Safari or you go in Chrome if you're on an Android device. And you need to go to the Equatio website. And so you need to go to Equatio.io. And so then you can do that. And then, um, let's see. And then what it tells you is it's going, it gives you an option of all the documents you have open on your computer. So it, it knows I have this math writing examples open. So that's one of my options. And then I choose to open it. And then you can actually um, take a picture of a worksheet. And I thought I had one here and I'm not finding it. But what you do is you come down on this and you're gonna take a picture and you take a picture of the worksheet and it will actually enter it right here. And so you can do that. And I'm just gonna step away for a minute because I had one and I'm gonna see, oh, here it is. So I have a worksheet. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this. So I have a worksheet. I have Equatio Mobile up on my iPad. So hopefully you can see that. And then I have a camera icon and I'm gonna click the camera icon and I'm going to take a picture of this. It says I have to allow the camera, but I'm gonna take a picture of the worksheet. So, 
And I, it lets me choose how much of the worksheet I want to select. And so I've selected the worksheet. So I hope you can see that okay. And then I have a little green check mark at the bottom. I'm going to check that. And I'm going to save it as an image. I'm going to, I'll see if I can save it as math. It wouldn't do it earlier in the week because it really isn't clear enough for it to detect it as math, but I'm going to save it as an image. And it should show up in my, oh, and then I have to upload it. So if you see my little blue button, I'm going to upload it and it will show up in my document. So it tells me that it's going to show up in my document and there it is. So, and then the really cool thing, if you have Read and Write Premium, you have a screenshot reader and you can take this screenshot reader and you can actually highlight this math. And so here it is, the math is there. You three times open paren one minus three G close paren equals negative seven plus G. So it actually will read it to them out loud. If they wanna read it again, they can hit play. They have more options where they can copy it. Um, and so this is huge if you have a student who has visual issues that you need to actually put it onto a worksheet that a screen reader can read it. You can copy it and paste it right there. But I'm gonna say edit with Equasio. So they don't have to take a chance of writing their problem and writing it wrong. This for sure is the problem they're gonna solve and now they can solve it right here. So you, and then they can use any one of these inputs. Once they have it, they can come down here. They can make, whoops, make sure that it's, if we go up here, make sure their cursor's in the right spot. They could solve the problem. They could insert their math. I'm not gonna, we're running out of time, so I'm not gonna solve it, but I wanna show you how. They could solve it here. When they do insert math, it would all show up right there. So how cool is that? That really helps. There's the worksheet was copied and I just use an iPad, you could use a phone. And then, and it's not even an app you have to do on the iPad or the phone. You actually just go to the equation, EQUAT.io, and then it's there. So, um, it, somebody asked if it recognizes word problems. I believe it would probably type them just as a word problem. I haven't tried it with one with word problems, so I can't for sure answer that question. But I think it would just bring it in as text. So, um, because, oh, I had some text at the top of this one. And I, so I think it would just bring it in as text. And so then the student would just have that word problem there. So, um, so that's what I really wanted to show you. There's lots of things you can do with it. I, and there's lots of things you can do with both of these. So what I really wanted to leave you with was some resources that you can explore a little bit more on your own. So here's for Text Help Equasio. I've given you the link to the Math Space um, video on YouTube, the mobile math, and the screenshot reader. The screenshot reader is a feature of Text Help Read and Write. And so you've got to have that to be able to use it. And it is a premium feature. So most of these features I showed you are premium features, but any student can use all the features of Equasio for 30 days for free. Their cost for it is very inexpensive. GeoGebra is totally free. So just as a comparison between the two, GeoGebra is totally free, but Equasio is totally free premium version for educators. So I've also given you, um, I think I've given you a link to that. If not, I think I have it at the end. So um, I've given you um, math textbook conversions and accessibilities. It's a webinar that explains how people can use this to actually make a math text accessible for students who need it for screen readers. And then, like I said, whoops, I'm sorry. Like I said, there's implementation ideas by teachers. It's an hour long webinar. Some of it is just some basics and then you get some great 
implementation ideas that teachers use it for. They are older teachers, not older teachers, there's teachers of older students, it's more junior high and high school, but um, the beginning of it talks about how you can use it for some younger students, some of the options. And then there's just a basic over video I created last year just on the basics of the input options. Um, the This video will demonstrate, whoops, sorry, I started it. Um, the YouTube channel for Equasio has great short little videos like I just showed you. So I've given you a link to the training resources and tips for using the YouTube channel and then how you can get it free for teachers. So, um, and then I've given you links to the GeoGebra tutorials, some tutorials that are great for getting started by um, a person that I just discovered. So, um, and then our YouTube channel that has some of them that I've made, they're not the quality that they have made, but it does give you some real basic ones. And then I also just give you a link to math resource list that just has lots of different math resources on it. So that is what I have for you today. And we, I'm sorry, we went over just a little bit long. Does anybody have any other questions before we stop? And I, I can go ahead and stop the recording so that you can ask them if you feel comfortable. But thank you for watching the webinar and I'll go ahead and stop the recording. Um, I think I will stop, oh, stop the recording. Okay, so thank you for joining.